The age-old debate, are Bucks nocturnal? We talk with Dr. Bronson Strickland from Mississippi State University. He shares what he has learned through GPS card data to answer this question. Here we go. Point blank, are mature Bucks nocturnal? No. A lot of, a lot of upset people there. So, so elaborate. <laughs> and um, and you've and you've talked about this in other other various forms. So, um, what have you? What do you think hunters see versus what the research is? Okay, so I, I will qualify. I, I hate to use it depends so early in this episode, but <laughs> it does depend. Um, so, are there cases? Are there instances? where on a particular day, a particular buck is, quote, nocturnal, meaning he is not up out of his bed moving during daylight hours. Absolutely. There are some instances like that. But we never, and again, we're looking at thousands and thousands of instances. We never saw a pattern where that was always true, or even a majority of the time was it true for a particular buck. I think where that comes from is if you look at where people hunt, people are hunting, you know, for example, in food plots, Mm -hmm. at least the surveys we've done, that is the single most common place people hunt. So if, if you're hunting on a food plot and where the cover is, where that buck is bedded is 300 yards, 3000 yards, whatever away there is a period of time that it takes for the buck to travel from the bedding area to his feeding location. The closer those are in proximity, the greater the opportunity you're going to see that buck during daylight hours. But we never, so you can see that very clearly too from our data. So when we put the buck's locations on you know, a landscape with a map, aerial photo, I mean, you can tell if the, if the buck is in the woods, is he in deep cover? And they will be up on their feet sometimes two hours before sunset moving around, but they're moving in a place where you're not going to very easily see them unless you're really snug against that cover. But then by the time the buck traverses through and meanders and gets to the food plot, yeah, it may be, uh, it may be 30 minutes after. And, and when we even look at a, a frequency distribution, so if you put them like in little, little groups, Jake or Ben's, uh, frequency of an observation by time. Mm-hmm. I mean, most of the time the deer is spending on a food plot in the afternoon will be right at or hour after sunset. That's the most frequent time, mm-hmm. but they're on their feet moving before sunset. Mm-hmm. And so in essence, someone listening to this right now, that is, well, that's I, I that, but that one big buck that comes on my farm every now and then he's nocturnal. I swear by it. And then what the research shows is, well, he, he probably, there's not adequate cover for him to be bedded nearby or to the destination food source that you're observing. He's probably, I would say he is nocturnal relative to your observation point. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in theory, for someone that was putting in a food plot, let's say there was a blank canvas, they would, would you would want to have that maybe what do you say 150 200 yards from where you would predict him to be wanting to bed based off cover right a C- couple hundred yards would, would be good and and even jake here's another thing you can talk about or think about is this all depends on your situation you know this all depends on do you own the land can you manage the land etc cetera, etc cetera. but isn't it better on your property to create a culture of deer going to a food plot to eat rather than to go to a food plot to get shot at. (laughs) Right. Absolutely. I mean, in in all seriousness. Yeah. 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 I mean, what, what we recommend, and you can always make exceptions in the South, you know, that sometimes it might be a weekend where we got to kill a lot of does. So so I'm not saying that's Mm -hmm. a bad practice all the time, but you know, I I think we make it to where, when you watch the behavior of deer, when they come out on their food plots, on they're skittish. Yeah. They're looking around. If there's a box blind that's not concealed, they look at it every single time. A doe does a head bob the whole time looking, you know, what if you set up your hunt to where you're intercepting the deer on the way to food, not mm-hmm. at the food? Mm-hmm. I think long term, that's just going to set up a far greater hunting culture. There's going to be less disturbance and, you know, 
food plots obviously are used to harvest deer and to observe deer and so forth, but it also is an opportunity for nutrition for your deer herd. So let's not have them scared to eat. Yeah, that's fair. And I, and I, the, other thing there too is depending on the food source, a lot of times you're stuck there in your blind or in your tree stand. And if you have a lot of matriarch does in there, you're going to get busted. I mean, even yeah. if, if you think you're concealed, more than likely you're going to get busted. And uh, so that's that's an excellent point. So in, in to summarize all of that, bucks are not nocturnal. And uh, it's just relative to where they're spending their daylight hours and how far the food source that you're observing is uh, kind of that correlation there. That is what our data tell us. Yes. Sure. All, based off of thousands of deer or, or yeah. I mean, there's a lot to, to quantify that. That's just not a, a very small study. And, and, but, but I will say this. I mean, I try to always qualify when I say on the average and what we've seen and our data suggests, and it's, it's not meant to be a wiggle word, but, but I do remember at a conference, this was years ago, and this was before GPS technology, but this was on a heavily hunted area. I can't remember if it was public land, but it was somewhere that was hunted hard. And they did have a, a VHF or a radio collar on a buck. And, and I distinctly remember that that buck would stay in this particular cover patch until after dark. Mm. But I think that's just because day after day after day, there were just so many people moving around that he just stayed hunkered mm -hmm. in, in that cover until he detected the hunters had left uh, the property. Yeah. So yeah, that, I think that can happen, sure. but I, but it's not the norm. 